Thank you, Lisa Ann. So yes, I run a technology company that designs and manufactures efficient, non-toxic energy storage and management systems. We integrate renewable energy in conjunction with or independent of the grid. The reason that this is important is without energy storage, renewable sources of power are intermittent as is the grid in emergency and blackout scenarios in which the centralized delivery of power breaks down. Our core value proposition is to really optimize any power generation source, whether that's wind, solar, the grid, or fossil fuels, thereby limiting or uh, reducing use and creating access beyond transmission lines to the 1.2 billion people that live beyond transmission and the 1.4 billion that have intermittent access. And then of course the balance, people who are grid connected and really help to transition the economy, this energy economy away from the heavy use of fossil fuels into a more renewable economy. We've been doing this since 2002 with mobile portable systems and in 2010 leveraging that platform technology and creating uh, systems in, uh, excuse me, residential and commercial systems both domestically and abroad. The topic that I want to talk about is in the last few years, uh, there are more and more entrants, certainly into the power storage arena, but also into the renewable arena and companies that provide solutions that manufacture and deploy these solutions worldwide are constantly faced with the, co the question of cost. And very often consumers confuse the issue of price versus cost. And the proposition that I want to present today really raises the question if consumers knew that the price point that they consider when they factor in residential solar rooftop with storage and they look at that price point and they look at the price of a kilowatt hour delivered through the utility or at the gas pump and they see that the solar and the storage can said to be more expensive compared to utility kilowatt hours and gas or oil. Uh, if they really knew the true cost and that cost were reflected in the price point, consumers would be making very different purchasing decisions. And that alone would really help to drive the transition away from a preponderance of fossil fuel to a more renewable and sustainable economy if consumers really purchased according to cost, not price, and understood that cost. So let's take a look at some of those costs. So the Inter International Monetary Fund helps us understand that uh, globally in 2015, pre-tax subsidies, and pre-tax is really the cost of delivering energy and the delta between that cost and what the consumer pays, again, the price point, that that delta is paid for in subsidies to the tune of $333 billion globally, pre-tax. Now let's look at post-tax. The post-tax is, it includes the pre-tax subsidies, but it also includes the environmental fallout and some of the other associated costs using fossil fuels. That takes the worldwide subsidies to a staggering 5 trillion 300 billion subsidy. Interestingly, ExxonMobil, one of the bigger global players in this industry, their profits in 2015 were $16 billion. So why is ExxonMobil benefiting from subsidies that drive the price point down such that consumers are not making educated purchasing decisions? One might ask. Another question that we're always asked in our industry is uh, uh, pri uh, price point and also parity. And the issue of parity, are renewables really cost effective? And when you look at these subsidies, the answer uh, is yes. So the other uh, important fact is the percentage of global uh, GDP. Uh, moving on in the US, the subsidies alone 
uh, that are accounted for come to about $20 billion. And this is just production subsidies. This doesn't include other unaccounted for subsidies. This graph is to really show that if we look at uh, the average subsidy since each of these industries came into being, so oil and gas beginning in 1918, adjusted for $2,010, oil and gas has benefited from almost $5 billion annually since 1918. Nuclear, 3.5, uh, biofuels, one, and look at renewables. So when we talk about parity, Let's talk about true cost and subsidies because that is part of the cost and the customer is paying a price point up front that may be lower for fossil fuel, but they are indeed paying for these subsidies but on the back end. This is another chart, it just demonstrates between nuclear, gas and oil, renewables are still at the bottom. So let's get to generation, fracking. We all know what fracking is. Another hidden cost in the centralized generation proposition is oil wells and water. At a gas well, an average use of water is between 177,000 gallons to 5.1 million gallons per year. You multiply that by 565, wells and you get to 2.8 trillion gallons annually just for oil uh, gas wells. Oil wells 177 gallons on average to 4 million gallons. Multiply that by 500 wells and you get to 2 trillion gallons for oil wells. Add those together you get 4.8 trillion gallons of water being used. We're all being told to take shorter showers what about this? What about the proposition of gas and oil and centralized generation and this heavy preponderance on fossil fuels? The environmental cost. Unfortunately, up until 1995, there was a super fund that came from taxes from companies engaged in uh, chemical and crude oil production. That came to an end. So who's paying that now? The consumer on the back end. So we may enjoy lower price points at the gas tank or a kilowatt hour from the wall outlet, but we are paying dearly on the back end. And that's not factored in again in the renewable energy industry when we're asked how much does it cost and have you reached parity yet? We've exceeded parity if our economic models capture these hidden costs. Another issue with water has to do with centralized generation plants. Uh, I'll just say generally that the central generation, the power plants, are uh, uh, using about 38% of our available fresh water in the US. 38%. That's on the generation side. Now go back to the previous slide for the wells and the drilling and add in four point to 4.8 trillion gallons of water annually to the 38%. I don't know how to do that math, but that is a severe cost, especially because these wells are very often in drought challenged territories. Finally, the uh, basic disruption of centralized delivery of power in the US affected 13 million people accounted for uh, in 2015, uh, and there were about 3,500 power outages. The economic losses, another cost that is hidden and picked up by the taxpayer, is $150 billion in economic losses because of those power outages. Transmission upgrades were ha facing a shortfall. So, so basically, the proposition is, if the consumer knew the true price, the true cost, as it's reflected in the price for a gallon of gas or a kilowatt hour of power, would they be making different purchasing decisions? And might not that create different decisions and really help move this industry into a more sustainable power generation source um, for the future? Our company is dedicated to empowering people to make these choices, whether they're on grid or off, and to really mobilize renewable power around the world to help 
this catastrophic event and others like it from happening. Thank you.